Hi guys, today I'm going to be making a video and this relates to uh, Graham Obrey. Now, we all know who he is. He was called the great uh, Scotman, the flying Scotman as he was called. But we have to understand though is the intention of his bike. His bike is very important, not just his riding style, okay? Now on the the you know, right here we have Boardman Chris Boardman who was a, a famous tra track cyclist and uh, he eventually went on to the do one of the Tour de France and set a pretty much the fastest record ever there on a Lotus bike. But anyways, the, these guys are pretty much youngsters here, okay? And I'm going to explain to you how Graham Obrey beat Chris Boardman in the World Championships in uh, 1993. I believe that I'm that I'm probably 99% correct on this, uh, that the reason why this guy here, Graham Obrey, beat Chris Boardman was because of what you see on the front of the bike. Do you see something strange about Graham Obrey's bike here? That's not his bike. That's not what he, what he raced on. For this uh, event, they swapped out the fork and went with a righty. Do you notice this, that the left fork is completely missing on this? See, this is his bike. It is his bike. They just got rid of the normal forks and put a righty. I'm going to explain to you why he put a righty in there. And I'm then going to pretty much explain why Chris Borman lost. It's not like Chris Borman lost by 10 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you now on the video here of how M Graham Obrey used the righty to defeat Chris Borman. So let's close that picture. Okay. And uh, we're going to go ahead and play this here. Okay. So as you can see here, Chris Borman was uh, ready, getting ready to start. And this is the uh, the race already in, in progress. And Graham Obrey is going around the track, sticking to that black line all the time. And notice here that uh, Chris Borman, what kind of bike he's using. And we're going back to Graham Obrey again. And do you notice something very strange? Again, he's using the righty. He's not using the uh, double forked uh, bike. Okay, here again, there's that left fork, the the one you've seen on the picture. Okay, now people are asking, yeah, but Graham Orbe's style of, of writing gave him an advantage. Um, I, I'm I'm really starting to doubt that on this race. The reason why is because Chris Borden was using a very advanced bike at the time, very aerodynamic, and but he was using a double forked bike not single. The reason why Graham Obrey decided to switch over to a righty is very simple. You just pay attention to where he's going. He's riding this way. So that means that if you use a lefty, which Cannondale does make, they make a lefty, right? This is Cannondale's lefty for mountain bikes. If you would have had a lefty fork, the bike would have tended to go out as he came out of the the straights into the corners, it would have pushed him outside. By using a righty, this guy, as soon as he came off into the corners, and I'm just going to show you here, there's enough of him coming around. So he's coming around in, from the corner into the flat. And notice again, no left fork. It's a righty. And immediately when he comes into the straightways, his bike tends to dip into the center. That's the point of using a righty. And here he goes again, going around. And the righty is pushing the bike itself back onto the center. While Chris Borderman is trying to keep the bike centered, this bike is pushing itself towards the center. This is a massive advantage in an oval track. Okay? Now, people say, well, but his riding style is also very important. Well, we know that. This is a, a much better riding style and it gives you an aerodynamic advantage. The issue is the advantage that he got against Chris Borderman, for example, in this race was two seconds. Now, two seconds, one, two, that's a difference. And the difference to me was his positioning on the bike. By using a righty fork, Graham Obrey was able to keep his bike straight through the entire track, never leaving, and Chris Borman is really, really trying to fight his bike to stay in the, in the track, where this bike here dips immediately right back to the center. Again, because it's a righty fork. So I think that in this race here, I think that, uh, that Chris Borman actually won the race, would have won, if Graham Obrey used his normal bike. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you his normal bike. 
Okay, this is his normal bike. This is a copy version of it, and it's all single uh, gear. Okay, and uh, double fork. Okay, now I'm going to show you uh, Graham Warbury's uh, bike. Uh, that one. It's a little bit more. Here it is, right here. This is Graham Obrey's bike. And you notice something here, double fork. This is the original bike that Graham Obrey was racing, okay? But he didn't race against uh, Chris Borderman on this bike, not with that fork. And now we're going to go back to uh, YouTube here, and we're going to show you the one-hour record that Graham Obrey did, okay? And the reason why I want to show you this is because we have to see what bike was he using. This is only a 40 second clip. Okay. And again, here we go again. I've, uh, I've got a good uh, shot here. This was in Norway where he did the one hour record. But again, okay, now let's look here. Just move that there. Okay. And going around again, and I'm going to try to see if I can freeze this so you can see the actual fork and here we go again it's a righty there is no left fork on this bike okay which proves the point that both the one hour record and the win against against uh, Chris Borman were both done on a righty bike a righty just means it's a righty fork there's no left fork on it okay and there you go so this is his one hour record and then Chris Borman beat him Anyways, the whole point, okay, is to say that why would he do this? I mean, he already had a riding advantage, okay, with this bike by by using the uh, the egg shape uh, uh, riding style. Why would he use the riding? Well, now you know. It was to give him an advantage of going around the track. And see, this is the regular dra bike, the regular fork. See his position, the way he rides. This is his regular forks. That's not the one he won the world championship and the one hour record. Okay, let's go back again. This is his uh, shoe on pedal. And again, same version of it. This is when they banned the, uh, the uh, drop position, the oval, and he switched over to a Superman position. This is the Superman position bike. The extension here on okay but again double fork and let's see what else we got here again here's that the uh, the video I just showing you again here's the righty so uh, t to me honestly I think that Graham Wilbury was way ahead of its time uh, and he used every uh, hardware advantage to th that he could get away with so personally I think that he was a genius in, in, in uh, cycling it's just it, the way that he put every uh, idea into the bike of uh, like using the righty fork, an oval shape for riding, and then it got banned, and he went to a Superman position. Just shows his genius, okay? But again, this um, this win over Boardman, um, I believe 100% that it was done because of the righty fork, okay? Uh, I don't think that, that he would have um, won against Boardman if he didn't use the that that uh, that fork and here we go this is the last race where he won the world championship after beating Chris Borman and again same thing see one fork the righty fork again when you go around a corner the bike tends to, to push towards the center because there's no left fork it pushes towards your your left this is the French uh, rider who's riding a, a normal uh, track bike and you can see here again, again all the time. Every time he goes around and after the straights, when he dips into the center, the bike will immediately turn itself all the way around. It keeps the bike is always pushing towards the center, so you don't have to fight the bike going around the track. You can just let the bike do its uh, its normal push towards the center. It's an oval track, so that's what the bike is going to do. Where a normal bike would tend to go out, you have to fight it to stay on the inside. And again, see this. Righty fork. This guy's riding a normal bike. So if you look at his position compared to Obrey's, Obrey's is really, really ducked down. There's so much air hitting this guy here. 
that Ober is going to win by a couple of seconds. Do you see his position here, the riding style? It's not just his riding position. It's also the, the, the fork. You need a bike that can keep centered on the track. And in an oval track, you, you, it's basically like NASCAR racing. They use different tires for the inner and outside uh, of the car. The reason why is because they're going around the same track over and over again. Right? They're not going making curves everywhere. They're just going around the same thing over and over again. So again, here we go. See that? No left fork on this bike. This is a normal bike. So this is, um, I believe, Graham Obery's greatest trick. And uh, it's never been talked about. Nobody ever discusses it. They just say, well, he just, you know, used the egg shape to write. No, he didn't just use that. He, this guy was way ahead of its time. Okay, so in, that, in saying that, this is a shout out to Graham Obrey for defying uh, the freaking UCI and the uh, racing committees and coming up with uh, something different, something better. Thanks for watching.